All right, so if your AC unit is not shutting off even when the thermostat kicks on the temperature or you even set it to off and the AC unit out here is still running, chances are it's gonna be your contactor. Continue watching to find out how to replace this unit on this episode of James Fix It. All right, so go ahead and pull the fuse. It's located in this box right here, just connected single line. You'll see it somewhere near your AC unit. Then lift this up, push that back to lock it in, and there's your fuse right here. It says pull on fuses, go ahead and pull that off. Now you can either turn it around, I always like to just set it on top just to be on the safe side. Now we're able to start working on the AC unit. So everything is located right here in this corner on mine. I just have four screws I need to remove. All right, so my screws are 5 sixteenths. Yours may be different. Let's go ahead and remove these. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and check with a voltage tester here. Let's go ahead and fill around. Any of this was hot, this would be beeping right now. And again, that's why you want to pull that fuse. And we're all good. And on all these contactors, there should be some sort of a model number. This one here happens to be a 24 volt two pole. So I actually went on Amazon and searched for that. And I actually found the exact same model on here. Now I installed this one about nine years ago. These can typically last about five to 10, sometimes even 15 years, depending on the conditions, the type of AC unit, and a lot of multiple factors go into it. But essentially what happens here is there can either be an insect that crawls in here and gets stuck and prevents the contactor from releasing, or they're just pitted. Um, the copper contacts can get pitted every time it kicks on, it just sucks those two in. And I'll take this apart at the end of the video and show you what I'm talking about. Now this one is covered, so I doubt that there's a bug in here. Probably just pitted. But anyways, these are pretty cheap. Um, this one costs about eight bucks, about eight or nine years ago. Unfortunately, due to inflation, it's a little bit higher, but it's still pretty cheap at $11. Again, link for this is in the description below. And here is the new unit, as you can see, same brand, Packer. And everything that I just told you matches up here. You've got two poles and 24 voltage. Now the amp rating here is also important. This one is 40 FLA, 50 res, and then of course 50, 60 hertz. C240A is the model number of this part if you are interested. Again, link in the description below for this part. Let's go ahead and swap these wires. This one only happens to have two screws on the right side, so we're good. Again, before you start taking anything apart, check the voltage. Make sure you have no power running through this and it is not live. Here is the new part. As you can see, matches identically. And there's all your information there on the right side. All right, and to do this and make sure I don't mess anything up here, I can just go one by one and I'll show you that right now. All right, so let's just go ahead and start with these pull connectors here for the, uh, the resistor on the side. Now these two yellow wires is what sends the power to that and tells it to turn on and off. Top or bottom doesn't matter, they're both connected to the same side here. Same with this one here, I'm just gonna go to the top for simplicity. And again, let's go ahead and do one wire at a time. Set these twisted wires here. Just make sure you have good contact and enough insertion and crank her down. So this one is black on the right side and red on the left side. For some reason, both of my wires down here are red. Usually one's black. I'm not sure why that, that's the case, but that's how it is. And 
just so I don't forget, I'm just going to point this this way. This one's right. Go and retwist your wire so you get really clean wire coming back into it. You could even clean this off with a wire brush, but really not needed. And then this is over here on the red side. This pull connector, let's go ahead and remove this. And let's go ahead and transfer over these pull connectors on the bottom. I think we're at a good point to where we can remove these two screws here. Last step is just removing these pull connectors here at the bottom. Just take a note of the orientation. This one here is on the left. And really stuck in there, geez. Got it. And then this one's the right side. Go ahead and attach our screws back in here. Alright, for now all the top wires. This one's my right side, so I'm just gonna drop this straight down. Got the push connector here on the left. Just like that, right on the left side. Let's go ahead and do the red wire. Now these will bottom out, so you don't want to force it, even though it looks like I have a little bit of exposed wire here, that's fine. As long as it's nowhere in your contact with the, uh, the negative over here. Alright, just going to verify your work. I'm just going to go ahead and crank down on these four screws, and we should be all done. All right, so everything here is done. Before I put the panel back on, I'm just gonna go ahead and reconnect the fuse and give this a quick test. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. So I have my air on. I have to set to 88 as a way. Let's go ahead and set this down to like 76. You hear that little click in there uh, that turned it on and off, so we are good. Let's go ahead and put this panel back on, and uh, that is a job well done. So continue watching. I'm going to go ahead and take the old unit indoors. I'm going to take it apart and see if we can see any type of pitting or possibly any type of insects or other material inside this chamber here. Alright, so here is the old contactor that I just removed. Let's go ahead and pull this apart and see why this is actually not releasing. So first off, I'm going to take this cap off, see if there's any bugs or any residue in here that's preventing those to pop back out. No bug. So there's the overall operation. Now there's a contact here, contact here, once it sends a current, these get sucked down and your input voltage is automatically connected and then goes outward to your AC unit. And that's what makes it drive and connect and start the operation there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, further take this apart, see if we can see maybe some possible pitting. But from what I see here, I'm not seeing any errors. So you can see a lot of dust there. That can actually be the material kind of breaking itself down.
Now that right there is what makes contact with it. And like I said, there's a lot of uh, kind of ash material and that could cause things to uh, maybe bind. Let's go and see if we can dive further into this here. There's more contacts for you guys. There's a whole resistor. Looking at this whole mechanism here, you see that it slides freely. There are no insects. Now this is pitted a little bit, so maybe that's why, maybe you just need a quick little filing, clean them off. Same thing with the internal sides as well. And we might be able to get this guy back and running in no time. So taking an ultra close up look at these contacts here, you can see that this one here is pretty badly pitted. Especially this one right here. These contacts on this side, we're just kind of sunken in here and just kind of sticking to it. All these little indentations in here can make it stick. <laughs> 